the chat as well. Okay, starting three, two, one. All right, so now um, I guess we'll just wait a moment just to see, uh, give everybody a chance to find that interpretation option. Uh, and just before we start, just wanted to thank again, uh, Representative Lim and Ms. Ramsey for being with us and for setting this up. I'm really excited about this opportunity for our families. All right, so maybe I'll go ahead and just say a couple things. Uh, for those who I have not met before, my name is Michael Doyne. I work in the Parents Center at Lilburn Middle School and uh, love working at our school. We have uh, some of the best families around and um, just wanted to mention a couple things that we have coming up uh, before we get started with this scheduled program. Uh, you may have received information about a meeting that we have tomorrow night. So for the first time ever for our school and for Gwinnett County Public Schools, there is going to be an official uh, soccer team, official cross country team, which is a running team, uh, volleyball team, in addition to our basketball and cheerleading team. So for our families of sixth and seventh graders, we are inviting you to a uh, interest meeting tomorrow at 6 p.m. for those students who are interested in one of those sports. Again, that's basketball, cheerleading, soccer, volleyball, and cross country, which is running. Um, so that's six o'clock. Also next Tuesday, uh, we have a similar meeting to this, but with the principal, it's called Inform with Irish, which is a monthly meeting we have with our principal. And she always has a lot of great information to share. And many of you, if not all of you, have joined in those meetings before. Uh, let's see. Um, and we have a similar meeting, another similar meeting to this that Representative Lim has helped us set up, which is an Ask a Banker information session on Tuesday, April the 23rd, where we ha will have guests from Truist Bank who will be providing information to families regarding financial literacy. Uh, and last thing I think I'll mention for right now is if you did not know, um, the, the county has asked everybody to reset their passwords for their parent accounts uh, through what's called Parent View or the Parent Portal. Um, and so that's what that is, how you will access your child's grades and attendance information. So if you're not already done so, we'll ask you to reset your password. And in a little bit, I will put a link in the chat so you can do so. Okay, I think that's all I had for right now. So now um, I will turn it over to uh, Representative Lim. Representative Lim has been, um, is the representative for this area and, and for other areas, he can say more about the area that he, he represents. And, um, and uh, he's been bringing lots of resources, lots of programs to our school and many other schools. So just grateful Representative Lim for, uh, for all you do for our community. Um, and then with that, Representative Lim, I will turn it over to you and let me make sure you can unmute. Thank you, Michael. I want to return the thank you to you. You are such a champion of the Wilbur Middle School family and really all of, of the Meadow Creek cluster. And, and we are really grateful and also grateful for this opportunity. I will speak very quickly uh, because Karen is the one you really want to hear from. But I, I did want to say we know that housing is an important uh, is an important need for this community, whether you are potentially homeless or temporarily unhoused, whether you're a renter or looking to be a homeowner or already are a homeowner. And there are a lot of resources that we need. But we've also been able to garner and, and get a lot of resources for this community. And this is why we're on this call today. I will introduce her in a second, but Gwinnett Housing Corporation is a wonderful nonprofit that, per their title, really focuses on housing. And one of the things that we've really worked on in the last two years is to address um, not just uh, the cost of housing, there are resources for that, we can get into that too, but also the condition of houses. Uh, we know that whether you're an apartment or your own house, 
sometimes these homes are really old and, and they're not necessarily the most healthy. And so we've worked really hard, particularly in the last two years, to garner a couple of resources that really help to create um, healthy homes, homes where people can, can age in place if, if you're a senior. And at the same time, um, we want more people to subscribe to, to these programs. And that's really why, why Karen is here. So I will introduce her. Karen Ramsey is the Director of Housing Initiatives at Gwinnett Housing Corporation. And I'll turn it over to her to really speak about uh, a, a few initiatives uh, that we know we would love to get out there and for you to consider applying to. Um, these initiatives, um, I will say we're, we're very careful about what we do. Um, there are requirements for, for, for some of them, but we try to make sure that, you know, people of all statuses are able to apply. We, we try to make sure that we're reaching homeowners and renters, et cetera. And like I said, we know we need more resources, but we're really happy to be able to bring you resources that we haven't yet had in this community. We just want you to know about them and consider applying to them. Um, and so I will close by saying, too, if you ever feel uh, the need to reach me, please feel free to reach out. I'm at marvin.lim at house.ga.gov or 404-585-7715. I know we've been able to help people with housing in general, but for now, I'll turn it over to Ms. Karen Ramsey at Gwinnett Housing Corporation to, to talk a little bit more about uh, what we've got on offer. Thank you, State Representative Lim, and thank you, Mr. Doing, for having me here today. Um, State Representative Lim has been a big advocate of making sure that the individuals in the communities that he represents get this information and are able to access the services that we are providing here today. So let me tell you a little bit about some of the programs that we have to offer. If you aren't aware, Gwinnett Housing Corporation is a nonprofit organization. We've been around for a while now, from since 1997, and our focus is housing whether it's creating housing, developing housing, operating housing, or rehabilitation of housing, our focus is making housing more affordable for Gwinnett County residents. As such, we have developed the first of a kind in Gwinnett County, a homeowner resource center. And the goal of that center is to operate these affordable homeownership or housing rehab programs. We have two really large rehab programs that we're offering right now. Um, and we also, through this center, offer housing coaching and advisement and education. So first I'll tell you about the programs and then I'll tell you about the opportunities for education through our home ownership center, whether it be financial literacy or you're ready to buy a home. So let's start first with the Healthy Homes Program. This is a free, and I'm gonna say free again to make sure that everybody gets it. This is a free grant program. Free in the respect that all you have to do is submit your application and qualify for the program. We don't charge you anything. We don't put a lien on your house. We don't ask you to pay us back. This is a free grant program that can provide up to $10,000 in free home rehab or repair activities. The focus of this program is to focus on the holistic health of the home. And this is because, as they have said, we know that a lot of the homes in Gwinnett County were built in the 1990s. They're older and they have some areas that need to be rehabbed in order to make the homes not just even more healthier, but also more efficient. So the criteria for this program is you have to live in our eligible Gwinnett County census tracts, which if you're in state representatives limb cluster, and if you're on this call today, you should be in an eligible Gwinnett County census tract. And your income has to be at 80% or below the area median income. Now, don't worry, I'm gonna show you what that is in a second, because I know everybody doesn't know what that is. So the census tracts, they mean nothing on this sheet, but these are the eligible census tracts for the areas that you live in. But like I said, if you are in state representative land district, your census tract is already included and you're eligible for this program. But if you want to have a holistic look at them, we have them here. You can also use this website to put in your address and it'll tell you your census tract. And these census tracts are on our websites as well so that you can cross compare just to make sure that you're good. Now, the 80% AMI, and this is very important, you don't have to make this much, you have to make at or below this number. So let me give you an example. 
if it's a one person only in the household, that person has to make $57,200 or less. So if there's only one person in the household, the threshold for being eligible for this program is making $57,000 or less, and that's annually. But then the example, if there are three persons in the household, so a mom, a dad, and a kid perhaps, then that person has to make $73,500 or less. So these programs are really don't have high barriers for entry. It's pretty easy for most of us who work regular jobs to be able to apply for these programs and be eligible for them. So if you're concerned about the income, as long as you look at your household size, so it's how many people are actually living in the household and the combined income of all of those people, okay? That's how you do that calculation. So again, it's how many people are living in the household, how many people are in your household, whether they're related or not related. If they're in the house, they're a part of the household, and then the combined income of those persons in the household. And if you have problems calculating that, we'll help you submit the application, we'll go over it with you, and we'll determine your eligibility criteria. If these are, this isn't a program that you are eligible for, we'll look to see if there are any other programs that you may be eligible for that can assist you with your home rehab needs as well. What you, the simple things that you need to apply for this program is you need your driver's license or passport. You just gotta have some type of government identifying picture ID. And then for income verification, we need uh, your last two months of check stubs. So we say four to eight because some people are paid weekly, some people are paid bi-weekly, semi-monthly. So we need just the last four pay stubs. If you're self-employed, you got to give us two years of tax returns. Um, if you're on a fixed income like Social Security, you can just give us a Social Security award letter. Or say you might be receiving unemployment, you can just give us your unemployment um, letter. Now, don't get scared because we have assets on here. I tell people all the time, we don't actually count the income in your assets. You can have $100,000 in your bank account. The only thing we will be looking at is the interest earned from that asset income. Okay, so if you do share your assets, we are not counting how much money you have in your bank account. We would only be counting the interest income from those assets in order to determine your eligibility. Now, the big question is, so what does this program repair? What does it rehab, right? Because if I'm gonna do all that work, submit an application, go through the eligibility pro 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 process, what am I eligible to receive? Well, the first thing is we do radon testing on every home. When at county homes, because they're built in the 1990s, may still have a presence of radon. So through this program, we'll do radon testing. If we do find a radon level that is higher than it should be, we'll do abatement so that we can clear that up um, so that it will no longer be an issue. We do lead-based paint testing. And if there is a presence of lead-based paint found in the house, we'll do uh, lead-based paint hazard remediation and we'll get that right out of there. We look for mold assessments and mitigation. So if you have mold issues, which we know a lot of older homes because they have a, a lot of condensation and moisture that may come in, may have mold issues, we test for mold. We'll uh, put in carbon monoxide detectors and smoke detectors in your home. So we'll actually install them. Weatherization, this is a pretty big one because weatherization helps when it's cold out and when it's warm to keep the cool air inside the house, um, makes your house a little bit more efficient. If you have pest control or rodent issues, we will do pest um, control for you. Um, the pest control, um, we do do, we do try to do ceilings and, and trappings and not use harmful chemicals that would be harmful to you or your children. We look for asbestos uh, and we do abatement if asbestos is present. There is painting. We'll fix windows, we'll do like roofing, siding. We know the summertime is coming up and during the summer I get a lot of calls just in general about my HVAC because heating and cooling units go down. We do electrical, <clears throat> plumbing repairs, and maintenance for any hazards that have the potential for injuries or fall. Now, these are a lot of repairs that we're doing under this program, but they are repairs that are necessary. The great thing, though, is you don't just have to be the homeowner to qualify. You can also be a renter. And if you're renting the home, you it'll still be based on your income qualification. We'll just get the landlord's approval 
to do the work on the home because since it is owned by the landlord, we'll still ask the landlord if it's okay for us to do the construction activities. So these are the type of repairs covered in this program. Um, the program is available for both renters and homeowners. This program is free. I'm going to keep saying free, free grant program, and it offers up to $10,000 in free home repairs and rehab activities, okay? So now I'm going to tell you a little bit about another program that we have available um, as well. And this one probably not um, be the most useful program for most of the people on this call, but we all may know someone, an aunt, an uncle, a mom or dad who is aging and is a little bit older and may need some assistance in making the home a little bit safer for them to age in place in. So we also offer a second program for older adults. The age requirement for this program is 62 or older. And the, the older adult has to actually be the homeowner of the property to qualify in this case. And their household income, again, has to be at AR 80% or below of the area median income. Now, the good thing is, is the older adult can be the homeowner. They can have whoever else they want living in the house. We don't restrict on that. They just have to be listed as a homeowner. So say if you are living with a mom, dad, aunt, or uncle who is considered an older adult by this definition, and they will require these type of accessibility repairs, we can still perform them as long as they are the homeowner of the property. So the income criteria is the same for this program as well. So remember, 80% uh, at or below of the area median income. So if it's three people in the house, remember again, they can make $73,500 or less annually to qualify. Same requirements, we're still looking for a photo ID, income documents, and asset documents. I always keep reminding everybody, we don't care how much money is in your bank account. We're only counting the interest earned from that asset. And these type of repairs are really great for seniors that want to age in place. Grab bars and railings. We do uh, lever handles and um, make it easier for them to open. Temporary ramp installations, tub, tub and shower bench transfers, handheld showers, raised toilet seats, risers for chairs and sofas, uh, bathroom grab bars, uneven surfaces in the home, which is a really big one because they um, create fall and slip hazards and other light maintenance items. The way this way this program differs from the other program is for this program, they only offer $5,000 maximum in these home modifications. And the senior citizen actually has to be the homeowner in order to qualify for this program. All right, now, if you're interested, I'm still gonna leave this up here for a few minutes. And I'll also send this to you, Mr. Doyne, so you can send it out to everybody after the program. You can apply on our website. You start the application, it's an online application. At the top of the screen, you can select the language that you would like to apply in, whether that be Spanish, Vietnamese, or any other language. You have the ability at the top of the screen to select the language that is most comfortable for you to apply in. If you run into trouble applying, you can call our office and I'll put our contact information up shortly. We have bilingual staff as well as we have translation services available for those should need them. If you are having problems with the computer, because we know sometimes we all do, I know I gotta ask my son all the time to help me do something. We, we can come to the office, we'll help you fill it out or we'll give you a paper application because sometimes a computer is not my friend either. So whatever way you need to apply, we're here to help you apply. Now, to flip the script a little bit, I want to remind you that even though we're doing homeowner rehab services, we also do services for homeowner coaching and advisement. So if you are interested in purchasing a home, if you don't even um, know where to start or what to do, we can provide you coaching and advisement and get you on your way. Monthly, we provide some type of educational opportunity for potential homeowners, whether it be financial literacy, talking to realtors, getting to know mortgage lender requirements. And our housing counselor will sit down with you, go through your entire financial portfolio, help you create a budget and help you make a plan for what you need to do to be purchase ready. It's a really great opportunity. And I'm gonna say it again for the people in the back, it's free. 
We're not going to charge you anything. <laughs> so you can come in and speak one-on-one -on -one with the housing counselor. She keeps all of your information confidential because I know everybody don't like to share with everybody, but she's going to keep all of your information confidential and she's going to help you come up with a plan to achieve the goal of home ownership. And that might take six weeks. It might take six months but she will work with you and follow up with you and make sure that your dream is able to become a reality. All right. We offer, like I said, monthly, some type of workshops or events. So once you sign up with us, she will invite you to those workshops or events monthly. You, there is no requirement to participate. It's strictly up to you what you want to do. And uh, I think the last thing I probably want to say before I close is that anybody who comes in as well for our homeowner rehab programs for either older adults or healthy homes, we will also assess your home for any plumbing issues or repairs. So we do plumbing issues and repairs as well under the Gwinnett County Water Resources Assistance Program. And if you qualify for those services by applying for any one of our programs, we will automatically complete plumbing or septic system repairs for you as well. So just to mention everybody, these are great benefits. And a lot of times people don't hear about these services until the grant funding is gone. And if people don't use this type of funding, we um, don't get refunded to continue to offer these types of opportunities. So it's important that if you are looking for any types of these repairs that you go ahead and apply and also pass the word on to others who may be interested in applying as well. And the last time I'm gonna say it is these programs are free. There is no obligation. And um, if you apply and you are not eligible, we will seek other programs that you may be eligible for. So thank you so much for at least hearing me out and listening. Now I'll open it up if there are any questions that I may be able to answer for you. I'm looking in the chat, Mr. Noyne, but I don't see any. You can tell me if I'm missing something. And and, and thank you, Ms. Ramsey. Do you think um, it might be a good opportunity just to have more uh, direct uh, conversation to just unmute everybody and uh, and we could hear the questions live and the interpreters could could interpret live. I don't. Do you have more for the presentation to talk about or is it now just the question and answer session? Just any questions that anyone may have. Okay, so if, I think I'll go ahead and just turn off the interpretation, and uh, and we'll go and we'll go from there. Interpretation directly in the pantalla. Yeah, bây giờ có câu hỏi gì cứ hỏi, tại vì sẽ tắt cái thông dịch bây giờ đó. Entonces ya estamos interpretando aquí en vivo. Y si tienen alguna pregunta, eh, simplemente lo pueden hacer y los atendemos. Y simplemente hay que dar tiempo para que los intérpretes intérpretes interpreten. And then we can just, I'm going to look for hands, I guess, first to see who has. Entonces, si quieren hacer alguna señal de para ver que tienen alguna pregunta. Okay, Miss Cunningham has a question. All right, so. Yeah, uh, Let's see, let me unmute you there. Uh, I can find Señora you. Señora Cunningham tiene una pregunta. Okay. Yeah, they call, call, call okay, um, yes, I have two questions. The first question is for the Healthy Homes Program that helps you out with 10,000. What happens if you need more repairs than what you all? La pregunta like, es si para la casa saludable necesita ayudas okay. que son más de 10 mil dólares. ¿Qué, ¿Qué pasa ahí si los 10 mil dólares no alcanzan para arreglar la casa? Ya, yeah, vậy la câu hỏi là tôi có hai câu hỏi lần câu hỏi đầu tiên là trường hợp mà cái sửa chữa đó hơn 10 ngàn đô la thì làm sao? When we come out to do the inspection or assessment of the property, um, at that time, we will determine what the repairs are that are needed to the home. If the homeowner needs more than $10,000 of repairs, we would prioritize which repairs are needed the most under the grant programs and cover those and try to refer you to other providers that may be able to assist with the additional repair activities. When nosotros salimos a las casas a hacer las evaluaciones, si hay arreglos que pasan de los 10 mil dólares, lo que hacemos es poner prioridades de cuáles son las más importantes y con las que no podemos cubrir con esos 10 mil dólares, nosotros entonces buscamos los recursos para ver si podemos atender las que no se alcanzaron a hacer con los 10 mil. 
Dạ, trường hợp mà chúng tôi ra mà kiểm tra cái nhà đó hơn 10.000 đô la mà để sửa chữa đó thì chúng tôi sẽ coi lại coi cái cái phần nào mà cần sửa chữa cao nhất đó, thì chúng tôi sẽ làm cái điều kiện đó trước để cho đạt được đủ cái 10.000 đô la đó. Um, Ms. Deanna, did that um, did that answer your question? Yeah. Oh. Cô trả lời được cho cô Okay. Yes. Uh, that did answer my first question. Thank you. Uh, my second question is for the older adult home modification program. Um, does the homeowner do, do they have to be the sole homeowner? What if there's like another owner on there? Entonces la pregunta es, ¿qué pasa? Eh, tengo una segunda pregunta. Eso contesta la primera. La segunda, si para personas mayores de edad, de mayores de 62 años, si no son dueños únicos de la casa, sino que son varios dueños de la casa, ¿qué pasa ahí? Dạ, yeah, cái chương trình mà sửa chữa nhà dành cho những người cao tuổi như là thực hiện uh, phải là một, chỉ một người được uh, chủ nhà hay là có thể là được hai người làm chủ nhà. Uh, to answer that, Ms. Cunningham, no, they would not have to be the sole homeowner, but we would use um, the income criteria for all of the homeowners to determine um, the if they meet the income qualifications. But as long as one of the homeowners is 62 or older, they would qualify for that program. No es necesario que sean, no es necesario que sean propietarios únicos. Eh, pueden ser varios propietarios, sin embargo, los limita, los límites de ingresos, o sea, el 80% del ingreso promedio del sector, eso sí se tiene que mantener. Pero pueden ser varios, eh, mientras que una de las personas mayores de 62 años sea el eh, dueño o dueño parcial de la vivienda, es suficiente. Dạ, yeah, các chương trình mà sửa chữa nhà cho những người cao tuổi đó thường thường đó là một người đủ điều kiện là được là, là họ phải 62 tuổi trở lên và có cái thu nhập của gia đình của họ cũng phải bằng hoặc dưới 80% thu nhập. And, um, so let's see, Ms. Cunningham, let's see, where did you go? And I'm wondering, uh, depending on how, what kind of questions we have, maybe going forward, maybe I prematurely took off the interpretation is, is what I'm thinking. Uh, I lost Ms. Ms. Gre Ms. Deanna. Uh, are you still there with us? Maybe you can post something there, Ms. Deanna, if you're still with us. All right. So I don't see her there. Um, uh, Representative Lim, I saw that you had your hand up. Yeah, uh, I had a, a comment. So um, to, to the last question, Gwinnett Housing Corporation has a list of about 70 different programs in, in this realm. I think it's getting close to 70, if I'm, if I'm correct, Ms. Ramsey. So we will definitely, or they will definitely help you connect to other programs. My quick question was, and I believe I know the answer to this, because I, I think I've spoken about this with GHC before, but you know, we're always trying to make clear that when there are you know photo ID requirements, that's not an, an immigration thing. Um, that's simply used for, you know, making sure that you have certain things on file. Karen or Ms. Ramsey, would you address if there are any other forms of that verification? Because I know you listed driver's license and passport. Are there other forms of ID that would be acceptable for that particular purpose? Entonces, yo quería aclarar que eh, definitivamente nosotros tenemos, eh, la Corporación de Vivienda de Gwinnett tiene muchos programas, hemos presentado unos de tres hoy, pero hay más de 70 que tenemos, entonces hay muchos eh, recursos y ayudas que podemos tener. Eh, quería preguntarle al señor Ramsey que explique, eh, porque muchas personas eh, están preocupadas por su situación eh, inmigratoria, eh, que si el documento de identidad tiene que ser de una licencia de conducción, un pasaporte, o hay algún otro tipo de documento de identidad que pueda utilizarse. Dạ, yeah, hồi nãy theo tôi muốn nói theo cái câu hỏi của cô, uh, nói là tại vì có cần giấy tờ gì ngoài cái giấy của uh, xe bằng lái xe hay là hộ chiếu không đó thì không, tôi không phải là nói là để theo dõi là quý vị là cần có đủ điều kiện ở nước Mỹ không đó, chỉ cần biết là tại nhiều khi nộp đơn á, mình cần biết người đó là ai để nộp đơn thôi, chứ không có gì hết. I think we understand that a lot of situations are unique. Um, the purpose of the photo ID to state representative point is that we have to verify that Karen Ramsey is actually Karen Ramsey. 
um, with verification of a photo ID. So we do require some form of government issue photo ID. We do not check in any way, shape or form for anyone's status, um, but it's just a verification of your identity because you and I all know that unfortunately identity fraud is more rampant. Um, but if your situation is unique, call us, let's walk through it. Let's see if we can work out something that will work for the both of us. We don't want to lose people or turn people down. We want to find ways to make the program work within um, what we can. Um, Representative Lim, did that answer your question there? Uh, I knew the answer. I just wanted to make sure. Oh, that, that okay. really <laughs> All right. So, no, thank, no, you, thank, thank you, Ms. Ramsey. Really great explanation. So I think uh, Mr. Thorsberg and, and Ms. Uh, Ms. T, would you mind saying we're going to restart the interpretation again? Um, I just prematurely turned it off. I thought it would be better, but uh, it's, it just slows things down. Entonces vamos a volver a entrar a la cámara de, de intérpretes. Entonces tendrán que volver a escoger la opción de, de que se sea interpretado la sesión. Vamos a volver a hacer eso para que sea más fluido la conversación. Oh, Ms. Ms. T, did I mute you or yeah. something? No, không, um, tại tôi tắt cái um, thông dịch sớm quá bởi vì bây giờ cái thông dịch nó trộn vô hai qua hai bên á thì um, quý vị cứ câu hỏi gì thì cứ bỏ vô cái ô câu hỏi rồi chúng tôi sẽ trả lời những câu hỏi quý vị có. Ok, so 3, 2, and 1. All right, so um, now I see a couple more hands up. Um, let's see, so... I'm going to ask Mr. or Ms. Motorola to to unmute. Voy a pedir que Motorola quite su ponga su micrófono. So. Hola, buenas tardes. Sí, buenas tardes. Eh, estoy escuchando la reunión y Y yo quería saber si a mí me podían ayudar pero con, para buscar una vivienda, vivienda para alquiler. Para, ¿Para una vivienda para dónde? Sí, una vivienda aquí cerca para vivir con los niños, alquil, un alquiler cerca. Ok, so, um, so mom is asking to, uh, for help to find a place where that she can rent that's near, near the school. Uh, she said cerca, so I'm thinking... Dijo cerca que cerca de la escuela, ¿no? Sí. Ok. Uh, so she's asking to, uh, for help to find a place to, to rent near the school. Um, let's see. If she could uh, speak to us one-on-one, um, -on -one, um, I would be better suited to answer her question in that format. I could share with her any properties that we know that are renting right now, but... Um, because I don't know per se of one that I may have close to Lilburn Middle School. Um, we have uh, Southtown Square, which is opening in Lawrenceville and they're pre-leasing right now. So if you reach out to that property, but that is in Lawrenceville. Um, so that may not be in the best proximity uh, to the school. Okay, uh, no sé si está en el canal de español, pero dice que si quiere hablar con ella directamente, quizás le puede ayudar, pero no, no sabe algo muy, muy próximo disponible a la escuela, pero uh, quizás hay uno en Lawrenceville que, que, que va a estar disponible pronto, pero no es muy conveniente para la escuela. Oh, sí, está muy bien, es que pues nosotros queremos una renta, pero no hemos podido agarrar por el motivo que no tenemos nos piden unos papeles, también nos piden tener tarjeta de crédito, nos piden un montón de, de requisitos que no, no, no lo podemos llenar todavía. Ok, well, voy a pedir, pedir que la señora ponga su número de, de uh, contacto ahí en, en el chat. Uh, so mom saying that uh, we, we've looked for places, but they're asking for different kind of papers. They're definitely asking for credit, credit, credit card information, and, and we don't really have everything. So uh, um, she likes the help. So Miss uh, Miss Ramsey, I don't know if you could put your um, contact information again in the chat. Okay. Yeah, State Representative Marvin Lynn may have some resources that are better uh, okay. suited for the area as well, because I, I know I don't have anything close to the area. If you could maybe unmute him as well, he may be able to offer some support with the specific area. Yes. So first, we are, and I will say we, 
Gwinnett Housing Corporation and I are trying to build more affordable housing in the area, particularly along Jimmy Carter Boulevard. Um, that has been rezoned, but we still need to work on it. We do recognize the need. Um, as, as it stands, it's, it's very much true that a lot of the apartments in this area have requirements. They're not necessarily cheap. Um, it, and it really is useful to contact um, us on a, on a case by case basis. Um, Ms. Ramsey and I work together all the time. So yes, reach out to her. There are a variety of different programs, but oftentimes we will talk to each other. Um, for this particular one, it, it really is a, a case by case basis. It, I, I wanna recognize that it's not easy right now, which is why we are trying to build more housing ourselves. But for now, if you reach out, we can potentially figure out um, what in the area may work for, for you better, better than others, because there are definitely some that are better than others. And we do work on a case by case basis with some of the properties. If, if we know your situation, we can kind of ask them, is there anything for you? So, so do reach out to Ms. Ramsey and we'll work together. Yes. And email for me is the best form of contact because I work between Norcross and Lawrenceville. So if you email me, I will reach it back out to you. Um, I work Monday through Thursday. And um, if we do have a resource, we'll provide it. Sometimes we don't have a resource. Um, but right now, as state representative said, because of the situation we are in economically with a lot of the apartment complexes, we're not able to do much about the compliance restrictions that they have as far as rental, but we are working to build more um, and develop more um, in the areas. Okay, and um, so uh, I'll just ask um, the 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 lady if she had her questions answered. No sé si ya contestamos su pregunta, pero uh, uh, hay un correo electrónico ahí en el chat que le puede ayudar. No sé si está en el canal de español con John. I don't know if you're in the in the Spanish channel with John, um, but uh, si tenía si si contestamos la pregunta. Sí. Sí, sí, sí me contestó la pregunta. Gracias, no más que como no entendí en inglés. Ok, uh, pero hay una opción para interpretación y voy a poner la instrucción ahí en el chat para que pueda escuchar en español uh, esta, esta conversación. Ok. Ok, gracias. Ok, and then I saw uh, Miss Felicia had her hand up and she put something interesting in the chat as well. So I'll ask Miss Felicia to, uh, to unmute. Hi, good evening. Yeah, that's what I was um, asking about. Are you guys looking like for vendors to help you out? Because like I put in the chat, I'm a public adjuster consultant and, you know, like whatever the $10,000 doesn't cover, we can try to help the um, homeowner or renter file the claim with their insurance to get repairs done if that $10,000 doesn't cover it. Um, I have not um, worked specifically with an adjustment agency, but that's definitely interesting. If you could send me an email, we can try to connect and um, okay. see if there are synergies there. Okay, I'll definitely send you an email. Thanks. It looks like there's a Miss Aaliyah that had a question. Um, Miss Aaliyah asked in the chat, can you rent from a family member and still get the assistance? Looks like the. Do we freeze? I think I froze. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I think we're live now. I don't know if you heard the question, but it looks like uh, Leah put in the um, chat there. Can you still get uh, assistance if you rent from a family member? Um. There. Yeah. There's no restriction to say you can't receive assistance from renting from a family member, but the family member would have to approve it as the landlord, as long as there's some formal, you know, arrangement out there that we can view. Okay. Um, thank you for that answer and question. So let's see. Um, do we have any other questions for, for Ms. Ramsey, Representative Lim, while he's on the chat with us? All right, well, um, maybe just give it another moment, but uh, 
just glad to see everybody uh, in this meeting. Um, if you if you missed the earlier messages, we do have a meeting for our families of sixth and seventh graders that are interested in sports. That's tomorrow at 6 p.m. in our cafeteria. Um, we also have a meeting with the principal next Tuesday and the following Tuesday, um, a meeting with somebody from Truist Bank that will help uh, provide some financial education to to all of us where we can all, I think, stand to learn a little bit more about how to manage our finances. All right, so um, I guess going once, twice. So will uh, anything else, Ms. Ramsey, you'd like to add, uh, Representative Lim? Oh, let me unmute. Yeah. Did I unmute Ms. Ramsey too? Yeah, I just wanted to add, please do consider uh, applying for these programs. Uh, we are at the kind of the beginning stages of these programs. So um, it's not oversubscribed. We have plenty of room. Like Karen said, um, these are free programs. Um, we want to help as much as possible. So even if you have if you don't yet know but are interested, please reach out. Um, we've helped people, um, this is mostly JC, but I've also helped too. Uh, get the documents together. We really want as many people in, we're trying to bring people into the program, not exclude people, which won't be true like next year. I would imagine the next year, you know, we'd probably have to start turning people away because this is not unlimited. So do consider applying. And if you're hesitant, reach out. We can help you talk through your situation. Yes, I put my email in the chat. Like I said, I would put phone, but I'm not always able to get to my direct office line. So a lot of times um, in between offices, but please email me, come by our office, call us, go to our website, whatever you need to do. We want to try to help. So just please reach out and apply. We're here to serve. I'll type the email in the chat one more time. So to make sure you get it. And some people logged in uh, after the beginning of the uh, session. And uh, as you can tell, we are recording it or I am recording it. And we'll plan to send out the uh, recording in the in the parent newsletter this weekend. All right, so I don't see any other hands up, any other questions in the chat. I'd like to give it an extra minute for the interpreters to uh, to interpret that and let's see oh what else is in the chat all right thank you okay so i will thank uh thank everybody for uh for joining us this this afternoon after probably what it was a long day for a lot of people uh thank you for spending a little extra time and thank you for uh for representative lim for bringing this resource to us uh and and miss ramsey thank you for what you do for the community um, so normally what we do, and I think I'll allow Ms. Ramsey the, uh, the honors this time. And oh, I also want a special thanks to, uh, to Ms. T and Mr. John for interpreting for us, of course. Um, but, uh, but, uh, we do, a, the way we close out our virtual sessions, we'll count down from 10 and then I'll sign off. So Ms. Ramsey, will you do the honors of counting down from 10 and then we'll, we'll wave and, and sign off. Got it. 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Buenas noches. Buenas noches a todos. Yeah. And yeah, we wait. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you to you. You're very welcome, Mr. Doyne. Have a good yeah, evening. Okay. Right. Yeah. So long, Ty. Be good. Behave. You do the same, John. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Buenas noches a todos. Have a good night. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.